camera movement. That's simply because my photographer, John Senecal, who is managing to hang on to a camera through all this, is just being pushed back by the sheer force of the wind here. In Old Saybrook right now, as I said before, all of the local roads are closed. There are a couple neighborhoods that they can't get to, including the Schoolhouse Road neighborhood and the Hingham Road neighborhood because of so many downed power lines. Emergency crews can't even get in there. The only people they say should be traveling right now are people who work for critical services. If you work for a healthcare facility, if you're a fire, fire uh, fireman or a police officer, other than that, they do not want to see you on the roads. All these down trees, down power lines, and this ferocious wind right now, that is all the reason you need, not to mention the fact that there's an awful lot of flooding around here as well. Let's go back to you guys in the studio for now. All right, it looks plain old nasty out it there. It sure does. Thank you very much, Jeff. Ryan is next and what is what is the wind speed like at this point it's certainly tropical storm force yeah what, what are we up at at old sabra yeah tropical storm force uh, gusts to 60 maybe even 70 miles per hour as the worst of the storm comes ashore in the next couple hours it's important to note that the rain's beginning to taper off in many parts of the state so at this point we're starting to see the wind really pick up and that will be the main concern in addition to uh, flooding from storm surge. I think that's going to be a big problem. Let's take a look at this map here I have for storm surge and you can see we are expecting a, uh, as you look, I believe this is New London, you can see the water sort of bobbing back and forth there. Pretty uh, rough surf. High tide in Old Saybrook at 1037 uh, this morning, so it's in about an hour. We could see the tide rise about an extra foot or so in Old Saybrook between now and then. In the western part of the sound, uh, we are looking at a very serious coastal flood threat. The tide is rising over the next two hours. We are expecting a four to seven foot storm surge. So far, Bridgeport and, Str and uh, Stamford are both looking at storm surges near five feet. So with that in mind, we are expecting uh, a pretty significant storm surge flooding event, probably the most significant uh, since the 1992 Nor'easter and maybe even uh, uh, even before that, since the 1938 hurricane. So in New London, uh, the tide has gone out. It's beginning to, uh, to go out. High tide was at 9-11 this morning. Uh, the expected level about six and a half feet, uh, well short of the record in southeastern Connecticut from the 1938 hurricane and followed close behind Hurricane Carol. But in Bridgeport, 1102 high tide, another 90 minutes until high tide. We're expecting a flood level between 11 and 13 feet, and that would be as bad or worse than the December 19 to 1992 nor'easter, which was 12 feet. The 1938 hurricane in Bridgeport was 12.27 feet, so we may be close to the all-time coastal flooding record in Bridgeport, and that doesn't mean just Bridgeport gets flooded. That means East Haven, Milford, Fairfield and Westport have severe to extreme coastal flooding, some of the worst that we've seen in likely 100 years. In Stamford, same story, 9 to 11 feet tide expected, December 1992, 10.1 feet. So a huge deal, especially in the western part of the Sound, big coastal flooding. Brad and Yvonne, back to you. All right, thanks, Anato. Oh, as you can see, Brad, take a look around me. This is what's going on. We're right here off of Lawrence Point. These are the waters off the of Lawrence. Oops, excuse me. I almost tripped on the mic with him here. Mark and I are really having a hard time just standing still. Take a look over here. This is someone's backyard. Take a look at this. Completely flooded. Take a look. You can see the boat over there completely flooded. The bench here turned over and another bench all across over here. We're just having a really hard time keeping still over here. And the homes over here to our left completely. Take a look at this, completely evacuated. Obviously, Irene is really taking over over here. We're having a hard time, like I said, standing. And the waters here are so high. I'm about five foot four, and this is only up to here. But if I walk any further, I will sink in. That's how deep it is over here. It's Stonington again. This is off of Lord's Point here in Stonington. Again, a really serious situation. As a matter of fact, the gentleman that lives at this house over here, you can see he was smart enough. He boarded up his windows, his backyard. Look at this. It's now part of Lord's Point. The water's off of Lord's Point here. I tell you, it's really, really an intense situation here. Back to you guys in the studio. All right, Melanie Basu. I mean, it is changed completely from the last time we spoke with her. And now the rain is really pounding and really dumping down on that area. Or no doubt about it. 
And, and Bob, that, that flooding that we're seeing there in that coastal section of Stonington, high tide was about an hour ago, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what? It was. So it could have been worse. It seems like we're really getting a surge in, even though it's beyond high tide. That's uh, some pretty dramatic pictures there from southeastern Connecticut. Now, quick update. As we look at the radar screens, you can see the heaviest of rain is definitely shifting to the north and west, and very heavy rain out in eastern New York and also up into uh, Massachusetts. I just want to read to you, so listen up. I want to read to you a couple of uh, rainfall totals. These just in from the National Weather Service out of Brookhaven, Long Island. Uh, Monroe, Connecticut. Monroe at 7.4 inches of rain, and that comes from a trained spotter um, that reports to the National Weather Service. The Danbury Airport, as of 9 a.m., their report is of six and a quarter and a third inches of rain, 6.34 inches. At Bridgeport, Sikorsky Airport, 3.25. So pretty dramatic change from the interior where you got those tropical downpours yesterday and right down by the water where, of course, the tidal surge is our bigger concern anyhow. Stanford reporting just under three inches of rain um, and that as of 9 a.m. And you look, look at the radar, uh, the heaviest of rain pushing north and east. And that uh, has to do with the fact that Tropical Storm Irene now is moving onshore, probably uh, in Westchester County or just in the extreme south, uh, southern part of uh, Greenwich and Fairfield County would be the center of the tropical storm. And you can see, it, 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 amazingly so, the rain to the west, the winds that we just saw from Stonington to Bridgeport, uh, at Old Saybrook, the winds continue to blast in off the of Long Island Sound. And what's going to happen is the storm moves past uh, your latitude, the winds are going to start shifting to the south and then to the southwest behind this storm and then to the west for later this evening and tonight. And as we've been talking about, I do believe uh, that the sun's going to come out. I, I know it seems strange to think of, but right now we have low clouds. We have the light um, kind of blowing rain with a few cells of heavier rain. But as we go through time, I do believe as the winds come around to the southwest, these low clouds will actually start to part and we'll see the sun come out as we go into the afternoon. So winds blowing right now between, uh, say, 30 30 and 50 miles per hour along the Connecticut shoreline. We're getting closer and closer to high tide. You know, the timing may have just been right to help help save parts of the uh, south, the western part of Long Island Sound from the worst storm surge, but it's still going to be a very bad storm surge. We're going to continue to get power outages. Soil is, of course, saturated. Winds are howling, and they're going to blow for a while now, uh, creating more and more power outages. So, Brad Nivon, back to you. Thanks so much, Bob. Thanks for the update. Amanda Rouse is live in the Elm City, and some of the pictures you're about to show us are quite remarkable. Yes, if you can look behind me here, you can see what the problem is that we were talking about all along through all of this coverage. This water has come from the sound up and over and onto the road, and it is approaching fast. Just a, I would say probably within the past 10, 15 minutes, we really saw it cover the roadway here, and it's moving in, and as I said, it's moving fast. We had to move the SUV a couple of times to make sure that we didn't get caught in the middle of it. This is the problem with that storm surge that the mayor and the emergency management director that they've been really telling us all along. You can just see the water. So this is actually on Long Wharf Drive here and obviously impassable for cars. We did see one car try to get through it and it did, but you know how that always ends. Usually one tries to go and then another one will end up getting stuck in flooded with water. So that is the situation now in New Haven where we are seeing some water now cover the roadways. We are seeing um, a, a lot of water now that it's close to high tide. Guys, back to you. All right, Amanda, thank you. We have some new information from Fairfield Police Department. What's going on? This is just as of about 10 minutes ago, Fairfield sent us this, this notice. There is water half a mile inland from the Fairfield Beach Road. Water has risen past the point of one rod highway on Reef Road, half a mile inland, and the tide continues to rise in the town of Fairfield. Residents are asked to be on alert. The speed in which the water will rise is, can, is far greater than you can avoid it. Mm -hmm. To move inland as soon as possible and call 911. This is a message from the town of Fairfield where about nine or 10,000 residents are currently without power. Mm -hmm. All right, and at this time now, let's go uh, live to NBC Connecticut's Jeff Stecker. He's in Old Saybrook where conditions have been uh, pretty brutal all morning long. Jeff. Yeah, we're still taking a beating out here, Yvonne and Brad. Uh, we are at Saybrook, Saybrook Point in Old Saybrook, and right now we're seeing a whole lot of the same still down trees out here. And uh, every once in a while, we'll see a branch come down and 
Uh, it's, it's just a matter of time before more and more keep coming. You know, in Old Saybrook here, I heard you guys talking about the fact that there are more than a half a million people without power in Connecticut. We understand that most of Old Saybrook is without power at this point. I see a handful of lights on, but in talking to the chief of police here, he says that most of the town is without power, and that is because most of uh, th there are an awful lot of lines down here. They've made the roads impassable. They're asking people to stay off the roads here in Old Saybrook. And certainly one place you're not going to be, you're not going to be on the water either. I mean, take a look at the marina here at Saybrook Point. Those docks are just bouncing around. But I think more telling out by that, uh, by that boathouse out there, the extension there, that's where people will stop by and gas up their boats on a normal summer day, but not today. You know, and off to the left, I just keep looking at those yachts and watch them bounce around. It's pretty extraordinary to see those big, beautiful yachts. And to answer Bob Maxson's question, by the way, I think he had a question last hour. No, that is not my yacht. Uh, but it's it certainly, uh, it's moving an awful lot. I wouldn't be terribly comfortable if that was mine. Um, in talking to the, the police chief, he does tell us that there are a couple of neighborhoods that are inaccessible at this point. Uh, and I think it bears repeating, the Schoolhouse Road neighborhood and the Hingham Road neighborhood, those are inaccessible right now because there are so many down power lines. I think, John, what he's showing you now, uh, my photographer, John, is all these trees that are blowing around out here and they're right next to houses. And we just keep thinking, you know, it's a matter of time before some of these trees, some more of these trees come down. The wind is really still pummeling through here. We have not seen the last of these winds just yet. So uh, a lot more damage is going to happen before this whole thing is over with. That's the latest here in Old Saybrook. Let's send it back to you guys in the studio. All right, Jeff, thank you. And Irene, even after being downgraded to a tropical storm, has just set a... Amanda Rouse is live in the Elm City, and some of the pictures you're about to show us are quite remarkable. Yes, if you can look behind me here, you can see what the problem is that we were talking about all along through all of this coverage. This water has come from the sound up and over and onto the road, and it is approaching fast. Just a, I would say probably within the past 10, 15 minutes, we really saw it cover the roadway here, and it's moving in, and as I said, it's moving fast. We had to move the SUV a couple of times to make sure that we didn't get caught in the middle of it. This is the problem with that storm surge that the mayor and the emergency management director that they've been really telling us all along. You can just see the water. So this is actually on Long Wharf Drive here and obviously impassable for cars. We did see one car try to get through it and it did, but you know how that always ends. Usually one tries to go and then another one will end up getting stuck in flooded with water. So that is the situation now in New Haven where we are seeing some water now cover the roadways. We are seeing um, a, a lot of water now that it's close to high tide. Guys, back to you. All right, Amanda, thank you. We have some new information from Fairfield Police Department. What's going on? This is just as of about 10 minutes ago, Fairfield sent out this, this notice. There is water half a mile inland from Fairfield Beach Road. Rotter has risen past the point of one rod highway on Reef Road, half a mile inland, and the tide continues to rise in the town of Fairfield. Residents are asked to be on alert. The speed in which the water will rise is, can, is far greater than you can avoid it. Mm -hmm. To move inland as soon as possible and call 911. This is a message from the town of Fairfield where about nine or 10,000 residents are currently without power. Mm -hmm. All right, and at this time now, let's go uh, live to NBC Connecticut's Jeff Stecker. He's in Old Saybrook where conditions have been uh, pretty brutal all morning long. Jeff. Yeah, we're still taking a beating out here, Yvonne and Brad. Uh, we are at Saybrook, Saybrook Point in Old Saybrook, and right now we're seeing a whole lot of the same still down trees out here. And uh, every once in a while, we'll see a branch come down and. Uh, it, it's, it's just a matter of time before more and more keep coming. You know, in Old Saybrook here, I heard you guys talking about the fact that there are more than a half a million people without power in Connecticut. We understand that most of Old Saybrook is without power at this point. I see a handful of lights on, but in talking to the chief of police here, he says that most of the town is without power, and that is because most of... Uh, there are an awful lot of lines down here. They've made the roads impassable. They're asking people to stay off the roads here in Old Saybrook. And certainly one place you're not going to be, you're not going to be on the water either. I mean, take a look at the marina here at Saybrook Point. Those docks are just bouncing around. But I think more telling out by that, uh, by that 
boathouse out there, the extension there, that's where people will stop by and gas up their boats on a normal summer day, but not today. You know, and off to the left, I just keep looking at those yachts and watch them bounce around. It's pretty extraordinary to see those big, beautiful yachts. And to answer Bob Maxson's question, by the way, I think he had a question last hour. No, that is not my yacht. Uh, but uh, it's certainly, uh, it's moving an awful lot. I wouldn't be terribly comfortable if that was mine. Um, in talking to the, the police chief, he does tell us that there are a couple of neighborhoods that are inaccessible at this point. Uh, and I think it bears repeating, the Schoolhouse Road neighborhood and the Hingham Road neighborhood, those are inaccessible right now because there are so many down power lines. I think John, what he's showing you now, uh, my photographer John, is all these trees that are blowing around out here and they're right next to houses. And we just keep thinking, you know, it's a matter of time before some of these trees, some more of these trees come down. The wind is really still pummeling through here. We have not seen the last of these winds just yet. So uh, a lot more damage is gonna happen before this whole thing is over with. That's the latest here in Old Saybrook. Let's send it back to you guys in the studio. All right, Jeff, thank you. And Irene, even after being downgraded to a tropical storm, has just set a... Now, let's go down to the shoreline. Amanda Rousey is live in New Haven with the latest on conditions there in the Elm City. What's happening, Amanda? Yes, we are in New Haven. We are on Edgewood Avenue right now, and I want to show you a little bit about the trees that have come down. If you look over here, you can see that this one was uprooted and then forced over most likely in the winds and into this home right here. We can't really see exactly what damage it did to the house, but this really brings a good point back about the saturation of the ground. We have received so much rain even before the hurricane makes landfall here in Connecticut. And you can see on the road here that it's just puddling. So there's puddles here on the road. It's saturated on the earth and where the grass is. And that is really allowing these trees to be uprooted so easily. And that could be one of the reasons why we're seeing so much down the combination of a saturated ground plus the, the wind. And then, of course, this rain that still keeps on hitting us here in New Haven. Guys. House reporting live for us this morning in the Edgewood Park section of New Haven. Thanks so much. All right, now let's go to NBC Connecticut's Melanie Basu, live in Stonington, where there are some serious problems in flooding as well. Yvonne, you know what? The situation seems like there's really nothing going on over here, but you can see that you can see it's still pretty windy here, but luckily there's no rain. Actually, it just stopped probably about 10 minutes ago. So we're live here at Stonington High School. We've kind of been here all morning long. We're actually using this shelter here also to charge our batteries. And as a matter of fact, there was this one area where we were earlier today on James Street and the water, it was incredible. It was unbelievable. It was at least up to my knees here. And I'm 5'4". And that wind, Irene was pushing me around and I couldn't do anything about it. So we eventually left that area. We will be going back there later to show you live pictures from there. But again, over here, you can see the family here is just kind of waiting and watching to see what's happening with Irene. They're hoping that they could just go back home soon. The little kids are asking, when are we going back home? This little one over here, she was asking, when are we going back home? I want to go home. Well, she doesn't understand that she can go home right now. She's a little busy there, as you can see. Anyway, that's the latest live from here in Stonington. Back to you guys. All right. All right. Thanks so much, Melanie. Irene is about to make landfall in Connecticut sometime in the next hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Bob, what's the exact plan for the thinking right now on Irene and, and when she arrives? Well, I tell you what, we've been kind of huddling about it, and it just, you know, it seems to me now that this system is onshore past JFK. Uh, we're, it's hard to find now because uh, there's so much dry air is wrapped into that core of the tropical storm. Yeah, talk about dry air. There's not a whole lot of dry air in New London right now. Buffeting winds as we look at the Amtrak uh, railroad uh, area, and you can see some of the waves crashing. I mean, these are Thames River waves, okay? Not Long Island Sound, but there's white caps on the Thames and that's uh, give you an idea of these 50 mile an hour winds uh, bordering on 60 mile an hour gusts that are being reported at Groton New London Airport and points just west. We head into Hartford, the Connecticut River. You know, for the Connecticut River to go into a flood stage, you know, it, it, it's, it's accepted quite a bit of rain from its tributaries. And, of course, we've put down about four inches of rain or so in the greater Hartford area in many uh, areas. So you're, you're getting a, a rise in the Connecticut River. It looks like the spring uh, snowmelt floods that happen so often. Looking at I'm Jeff Stecker. He's been live for us all morning long, braving the conditions out in Old Saybrook, uh, where they are pretty bad. Jeff?
How are things faring yeah, right uh, now? This is probably the heaviest wind that we have seen all morning long. And right now in Old Saybrook, all roads in the town are closed to local traffic. And th this is why. I don't, I don't, I'm sure if John can see me, so I'm going to stand right next to him and talk. We have a lot of trees down here in the parking lot of the Saybrook Point Inn. Uh, and that is because this wind now is ferocious, as ferocious as it has been all morning long. There's just trees down everywhere. And then if we take a look out into the marina here, where usually they have lots and lots of boats, these docks are just bobbing all over the place. I've never seen anything quite like this before. And then if you can see out at the very extended part of the marina there, the waves are coming right over the dock and you have those huge yachts that are just bobbing around right now. I can't imagine uh, anybody would be sitting in there at this hour, but those, those boats are just basically being tossed around in the water. They're still secured, they're still hanging on, but certainly they're getting uh, they're getting a workout today as the storm comes ashore. We had to move again. We've moved a couple of times now because the storm surge has pushed over the seawall in some areas here along Saybrook Point. It's very close up in the area where we are right now. Let's go to Bob Maxson. And, and the rumor is not true, right? It, it's not Jeff's boat out there. <laughs> no. That 80-foot that yacht or 90-foot yacht is not Jeff's. Okay, just double-checking. Tropical storm Irene has made landfall. It's moved across Long Island. I think for all intents and purposes, the center of the circulation is probably right on top of Greenwich right now, as you can see here on the latest satellite imagery. Uh, a couple things you want to note here is that, uh, for one, the center of circulation near Greenwich. Jeff is just being absolutely pounded right now by those southeast winds. And I'll give you some wind speeds in just a moment. I want you to notice on the back side where the winds actually go to the southwest around the back of the storm. Yeah, the, the clouds are thinning already in Long Island and also down across New Jersey, Delaware. Now this isn't the most precise satellite image as far as that goes, but it gives you an idea. There's a lot of, uh, I think the sun's gonna be out here Early, early to mid-afternoon at the latest uh, because the storm is starting to accelerate now up to about, what, 23, 24 miles per hour, accelerating to the north, northeast, and seeing so go right up from Greenwich, I think right along the Connecticut, New York State border. Uh, seems like a pretty logical track for the uh, rest of tropical storm Irene. And as this moves by, there may be a lull in the wind right underneath the circulation, but around it, we're still looking at damaging wind gusts. And uh, take a look, JFK, okay, the center of the storm is past JFK, still reporting a wind, a wind speed of 47 miles an hour. Uh, no report out of Norwalk, but at Greenwich, 33 miles per hour. You know what, I'm gonna control this myself. At Bridgeport, 49 mile an hour winds. This is what we just saw Jeff Stecker uh, getting hit with, and it was a, uh, a uh, north, or a southeast wind coming in right off the sound in this fashion, okay? And uh, just, uh, there's no friction, there's nothing to slow it down, there's no trees, no buildings on the sound, so Jeff gets the full brunt of some of these winds. We uh, head out to eastern sections, look at this, uh, gust to uh, at Groton, New London Airport, and this is a update up to 60 miles an hour for the wind gust there, 49 mile per hour wind gusts on the block, and also at Montauk, 40 mile an hour winds. So, impressive winds, while the rain is still pouring down in many locales, we do expect the wind or the rain to diminish but these winds are really going to continue to blow here over the next couple of hours so um, it's going to keep the crews from getting out there to try at least to uh, uh, fix up some of these power outages that number over uh, close to a half a million uh, customers so 43 mile an hour wind gust at, at Meriden as you're looking at this keep in mind that the uh, center of the circulation is probably somewhere right around Greenwich okay as a tropical storm very strong tropical storm we're getting oddly enough no report out of the uh, Long Island Sound, Central Sound buoy. Uh, that may have, um, because of the wave action and the wind action out there, we may have uh, lost transmission with that buoy. There's the 50 mile an hour winds at Bridgeport, the 60 at Groton, gusting 30 to 45 now in, in through the central part of the state. So this is not a time to venture out at all. This really uh, shows the fact that the rains are really going to slow down quickly. Yeah, it just, if you know, the more you look at it, the more you can see that right either on the, I think it's on the Westchester County and uh, Greenwich and Fairfield County line is probably the center of Tropical Storm Irene right now. So uh, flash flooding, big issue. All right, rains are continuing. Again, they will start to slow down over the next three hours, but for now reports of four to six inches, even seven inches of rain around Southbury. So flash flooding of many of our small rivers and streams. That's a quick weather update. Again, I, Irene is now pro coming across uh, Long Island Sound, probably over uh, Greenwich. You're very close to it at this hour. Back to you guys.
Thanks so much, though. We are now dealing with Tropical Storm Irene, downgraded from a hurricane a short time ago, but still battering most Connecticut towns with heavy rain and strong winds, particularly along the shoreline. More than half a million customers in the state are without power at this time. We can tell you West Hartford is the latest community to declare a state of emergency. They, um, and also state police say that one person has been killed in a fire in prospect, a fire due to the hurricane at the, that time. Now it is a tropical storm. The Merritt and Wilbercross parkways are shut down. A statewide tractor trailer ban was put into effect about three hours ago by the governor. As far as train and bus service in the state, well, it has been shut down. Airlines have canceled nearly all their flights to and from uh, Bradley International Airport in Windsor Locks. And now at this time, we're going to go to a uh, South Windsor Police Chief Matthew Reed to kind of give us an update on what the conditions are there and the concerns as well. Chief. Hey, good morning, uh, Yvonne and Brad. Um, I tell you, I think uh, Irene is now here. We waited a long time overnight and saw nothing but a uh, some periods of heavy rain and now the wind has come in and I hope people understand that I don't think the worst of the storm has passed through South Windsor uh, yet but we're seeing it now uh, in the past hour I see 17 calls we're uh, currently working on where we have trees down and wires down uh, blocking the roadway and our, our our biggest frustration is one our police officers our public safety personnel cannot stand by at every tree that's come down and every line that's on the road so our caution is, of course, to all of our residents, not just here, but I guess everywhere in the state, don't touch the tree, don't touch the tree limb, and certainly don't touch the line. You won't hear anything, but you have to assume that the power line is energized. Uh, we're telling our officers the same thing. Of course, our public works crews won't touch the trees. If there's a power line that's involved, there's no way that any power company can get these lines de-energized. Um,